Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to the WGL EU Season 4 Match Week 10. We are into the Play Day 2, and we have some incredible games coming up for you guys today to pretty much find out who will be joining us towards those offline finals, or at least qualifying into those positions to do so. And I'm joined by my incredible co-caster, Oliver. How are we doing today? Doing very well. Excited to see who's going to be joining us in about a month's time here in Cologne. Ooh, secrets. Secrets being given away there. Shh. But still, that aside, we saw some... Insane games last play day to say the least. Virtus Pro just went on in a complete tear and tore down Kazna Crew in their way. And if you did somehow manage to miss that, let's make sure we have a little look back, see exactly what you guys missed out on. Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to the WGL EU Season 4 Match Week 10. Armely low, but Butcher and Polomako are lower, and it looks like Xena's been caught. Positive finds Polomako, and the move comes out from Schoolbus. They have found these guys, and they're tearing them apart. We've finally seen one tank making its way back, but it's too little, too late. Butcher cannot get there in time. Denial too slow to the mark, and Schoolbus pick it up on the second map. This is unbelievable. Positive is on the run. He might be able to get away. Look at the attention he's drawing away. Four seconds on that cap. They're going to cap this one out again. School bus. Can you believe it? No, just about reset in time. Armley taking a big bit of damage. Four seconds still going here. It's all down to Meritorious. Butcher found one. Zero seconds left. Have they done it? Yes, they have. School bus again. Denial, what are you doing? You took the bait and School bus took the win. Alien again going forward, just caused tracked hell, but Povel from the side came back, did the job, but the cap's still going for Kazna. It's definitely going for Kazna, three seconds left. Four seconds on the clock, four seconds now appears. Oh. Does not allow the shot, oh. oh, he takes it down with the last second left, but can they pull this off? It finally reset it through and just caused and Bishop not moving a muscle, still getting the cap underway. The base race continues, Povel joins in, one second on the cap, it's come through for Virtus Pro, they pull it off in the end, and Kazna a second away. Lucky cracking to get themselves into one location, defend it and attack. Yeah, Burgate though on the, on the flank round the back has found Kelly going to do the damage. Fluky now might split off as well. Find Matt and this is a nice play from Isuba. Very well rounded. Finally getting the execution and they deserve this hands down. This is brilliant stuff from Isuba. Three tanks now remaining. Two minutes left. But Money finds Birgit. Cross shot from Kelly. Finds Mirage. Moving in towards him at Money. Can the Money withstand? I don't think he can. Mirage is there. Looking for two. He's got two towards him. Bishu and the Money focusing him down. Mirage takes down the Money. Bishu and Kelly, the last two alive. Finally, we might have seen this tactic being broken. And can you believe it? Isuba in the <laughs> final map undoing oh. those defensive tactics that consistently win the games. Yeah, finally, Ruinberg's defensive play has been broken. Can you believe it? That was something that I'm glad to have a little look back on. Obviously, Virtus Pro stomping Kazna Crew was something that we will not forget for some time. But all in all, in that play day, we actually didn't see that much movement within the rankings. As much of it as it was a great display of tanks, it didn't make much of an effect. So you'll still see Virtus Pro at the top, Kazna in second, and Scorebus in third. So that's still pretty much locked in and safe. But then we go a little bit further down, there's still a lot of movement to be had here. When you look at TCM Gaming there, they're an extremely good team. They've been putting some good results out of course. A couple of draws here and there have not really helped them at all. You only get one point for a draw, of course, a win giving you three. So three of them they've got and um, possibly have to ask questions whether they should actually got the wins mm. on that one. But they are still the contenders to go in through into the season finals and see play as well sitting on the same amount of points and pretty much the same about everything apart from a few more losses than uh, TCM. So those two for me are most likely at this point to go through. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've got Lucky Cracky, Drooly Leprechauns and Freefall. And of course, the Nile right at the bottom as well in 10th place, all with 10 points. And uh, if uh, TCM and C-Play, for instance, drop the next couple of games, they could also qualify. But it's really that situation for them when they have to rely on other teams to lose for them to get through. Yeah, and some of those other teams will be actually playing in today's game. So we'll be able to see kind of the bigger effect of these matches and it's all going to come down to the next couple of play days to define who will be joining us. As we said, the top's pretty much set in stone. You can't really change Virtus Pro up there. Your Kazan Cruz, your score buses, who have been consistent throughout this season. But below that, in the kind of, you know, from fifth downwards, you never know what's going to happen. As you said, some may have to depend on other teams losing, picking up victories in their own right. But a lot of factors will be coming into place. And let's have a little look towards today's games because they're the ones that will start this kind of momentum shifting. And to kick off, it'll be Seaplay and the Leprechauns. Both teams looking to get their positions secured towards those offline files. Seaplay have a chance. 
as do the Leprechauns. Freefall in the same boat, following that up against Evil Panda Squad. And last but not least, we'll set up against TCM. Now, which is the biggest game of the day, do you feel? I think TCM, they do deserve a place in the season finals, just looking at their performances throughout this 10-match uh, uh, week. So for them, if they don't win against Wusa, it'll be a big blow, and I think it'll be a big blow for the whole season because I think they're going to add a lot to the uh, to the finals. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we've got Dream Leprechauns and Freefall on the same amount of points, so they could possibly qualify if they do win and, and see play you know they've had four games in a row while they've won mm. um and if they can make that five it would be truly incredible only verts pro managing to keep as many wins in the bag in a row yeah most certainly some very important games coming up and you might see teams crumbling under that pressure but we still want to know what you guys think at home of these guys because let's bear in mind you always seem to get it right somehow which is damn impressive we we, we kind of fumble it a hell of a lot we kind of go for the votes in between ourselves so you take one team yeah. i take the that's, other so that's it's a 50 chance that's our secret exactly it's a cheeky way of doing <laughs> things but melly knows how to get you guys involved who can really tell us the results and let us know who's going to win because you guys know it because there's gold on the line exactly and i'm so happy that you didn't ask me actually <laughs> but people at home it's your time to shine head over to facebook.com slash wgleu and hand in your vote just tell us who your favorite team is and then in the tab where you find of in poll you can actually as i said vote for your team and enter the predicted scoreline of this matchup and by predicting right by guessing right you get a chance to win one of three bonus codes i think it's really worth participating and another chance of winning bonus codes is via twitter if you head over to twitter.com slash wgle you follow our twitter account of course where i keep you updated during the stream so even if you can't watch the stream you will know what happens on our server so this is actually pretty cool i guess but another way of winning as i said is simply using the hashtag wgleu and getting lucky to be pr uh, to be rewarded as one of the three tweets of the day so that's pretty cool, I guess. It's worth getting involved in, <laughs> Definitely. Too, for sure. I uh, mean, there is a T2 light on the line. Pretty awesome. 1K gold, Not 7 bad. days of premium, and a garage slot. <laughs> so garage well, slots are essential, right? Exactly. <laughs> you got to get it going. But guys, that's how you get involved with us here, here in the studio. We love hearing from you guys, and we definitely want those predictions coming through. So get on Facebook and Twitter. But that aside, let's get back into tanks and give you a closer look about who you're going to be voting on in the next couple of seconds. So C play up against... I don't think it's TCM, it's actually drilling leprechauns. But well, look at C play here. Take me through who their important players are. Um, Nervax is truly an incredible player all round. He's really been a, a cornerstone to their gameplay throughout the whole season. Um, so I would look into him to really try and pull it out and be good because against mm -hmm. the Subaru, he wasn't up to par. I just thought, you know, sitting down in ninth place in terms of the damage done and all the good things, you know, efficiency rating in general. So if C play wants mm -hmm. to win this one against Druid Leprechauns, yeah. then for sure they have to have Nervax on point. Ruster needs to be there alongside him, of course, the team captain and the man who can uh, do all the tactics for C play. And of course, we've got Dream Leprechauns on the other hand. Uh, Message, their team captain, sitting in third place in terms of efficiency, looking to him to try and uh, step up to the mark as well. Well, the first map is going to be steps, so let's not waste any time, and let's get looking towards that first map. And welcome into the battle. It is on steps, as promised, and in the south in blue, it will be the Drooling Leprechauns in the north in red. It's C-Play. What are we seeing so far? Uh, we're seeing Drooling Leprechauns head over towards our left side, since I and uh, some of you one of the new players joining Drooling Leprechauns for, for the end of the season. Message also heading that way, Snake Eye Finn, Tolo, Kirex in the middle. Uh, Kirex is doing the spotting out towards the right side. And for C-Play, much of the same. Um, we've seen them do plenty of times before the northern side push in towards the trench trying to get initial spots on and trying to do a little bit of uh, scouting they can at the beginning and of course once they've done that they can head back and just kind of have an idea of what Julian Epcorn wants to do. Mm. And looking at this dead zone and the kills or both T69s just going to the standard fashion nothing too unordinary for these guys and I, I don't think it's a bad thing for C play there they can be quite aggressive on occasion and it's nice to see them playing a little bit calmer, a little bit smarter. And you can tell the impact that this game could have on that 
resulting scoreline. But the one thing I do like, especially, is Ruster in that 1390, just right up above. But what are we seeing from the Leprechauns? They look like they're making the way across the center of the map here. Yeah, we've seen a lot of teams kind of look towards the center of the map. They haven't actually utilized it uh, in, in all forms, I have to say, it's been kind of like a switch between whether they actually want to push through or get some spots out. And, you know, no one's really said, let's actually push right through, go for the cap or go for a flank. Um, and I think they're missing a little bit of a trick there because, as you can see, it's, it's pretty much a perfect location to cross the map in half. That's what a lot of teams do. They just basically put a line down the map so you can't go across the otherwise will spot or it would at least try and take you down. Um, so the hull down position there for the T69 and the Pershing will be perfect. Message in front there to get the spots out. And really, they kind of kept C play in one location over towards that trench side. Um, and as you said, it does mean a lot for them. C play can still not qualify. Of course, three Neprocons have a much higher chance of that happening. So um, they got a little bit of a buffer zone. But C play for sure have to win this. Yeah, and you'll see that resulting in the gameplay a lot more tentative, a little bit more cautious. And if the moves are going to come out, they're going to be decisive as hell. They're going to have to make sure it really counts. So we did see Ruster moving out of that position that you're sitting up in. Maybe that's their counter to a trench side push. We've seen it occasionally working for them. A couple of teams being caught out using it, however. But Ruster is on the roam. And I'm a big fan of this man. He can certainly do some real damage. And I'll have to see what he can do in this one if there's any... Spots to be found or shots to be made. I'm sure he'll be at the forefront doing so. So at the moment, just finding their way around. Quite defensive from Seaplay, however. They look like they're happy to be tucked in towards the trenches, not really wanting to get too involved just yet. Then again, only really three minutes passed. It's all about the opening play we're about to be watching from these two guys. Whereas the Jordan Leprechauns look a little bit more likely to make the move, but then again, they could easily just back away from this. Yeah. They do look like the team that wants to go forwards and uh, try something. A couple of blind shots coming out from uh, C play there and towards the mountainside. We've seen a couple of them hit actually. Count sitting up there in a tier one. Um, he's just going to basically stay safe until he can actually go out and uh, perhaps um, spot something out if he does go towards the cap. But he only needs to live because that's what he does. He has to spot the cap, keep it safe, and make sure that the other team doesn't push in there. Tensai over the top, one of the top players for Drew Leprechauns. Um, as I said, uh, Message does need to perform, Sensei needs to perform, and really the two teams um, have to have all their players on point to actually go through. Both of them, as I said, still can qualify for those season finals. And, uh, well, that's a lot to play for, obviously, a lot of money on the line, a lot of prestige. And really, at the end of the day, you know, the grand finals um, also possibly on the line for these, for these teams. Um, obviously, more information on that to come. It's still quite a long way off. WGL Season 4, um, just going to be trying to get some spots out. And really, he's a player that's joined Drew Nepcons recently. And he's going to be wanting to perform, despite the fact that he's in a Tier 1. He's a great player. And um, one of those players that needs to kind of give Drew Nepcons that bite they need, because they have got the buck. Well, let's see if you can find anything there. He is looking for a spot. There are a good couple of players down there. Nervax, Dr. Tour, still around, still trying to keep eyes on. He has been spotted out, I believe, yet yeah, his his work has been slightly undone. But maybe that's given a bit of an idea to see play where the Leprechauns might want to go. But then again, we haven't seen that many decisive victories on steps. It's generally been quite a passive map. Uh, plenty of rotations, but very few engagements, apart from maybe going for a cheeky cap every now and then. But with five minutes left, do you think we're going to see action here, or is this maybe the first map where they want to draw things out like usual, or like more usual we've seen this season? Yeah, I mean, um, it's going to be more about the three-minute mark, I think. Um, you know, you said it, it's a lot on the line here, and Steps isn't a map which you see a lot of definitive plays on, especially not in the early minutes, because, you know, if you, if you don't have a good solution then really the only other solution is to actually push. Haki does receive the first shell of the game, though, 1-3, one, 1-3, three, one, three, left on that T32. Um, and uh, really that's not a big consequence because he is playing the tank and has the most damage and the most HP to play around with. So a couple of back and forward shots, none really doing anything instrumental. And um, we we'll have to wait and see who can actually pull that first move out. Yeah, we'll have to wait and find out. As you said, Haki did receive that first shot in the T32. Plenty of HP there, however, to deal with it so you can just kind of chill out and take his time outside of that a couple of spots being made still and it is mostly just wgleu season four popping up there up by the a line and that's pretty much all we're getting here not not too much action and well 
looking at the tank choices, very heavy T32 biased for C play. Mm. Uh, sorry, T69 biased for C play with that T32 in play. Is it indicative of anything, picking up those T69s rather than those 1390s, or is it just for that trench side? It's just for the trench side. Um, they want to stay hull down, they want to stay safe and have all the abilities they need just to ward off a, a push from Drew Neprecorn. So you have a lot of T32s, um, T69s, MX1390 in there just for spots, and you really kind of have all the bases covered you need on this map. Um, a lot of teams have gone a little bit heavier, but um, it's kind of changed around a little bit. Um, three minutes and 33 seconds left on the clock, and um, we'll have to see what happens. But we saw last week, for instance, Virtus Pro crushing Kazan Crew within three minutes max on every single map, and one minute and 51 seconds, the fastest time they've ever did on the map. So really that shows you how fast and how furious you can be and still be successful, because that was a 3 0 stump. Yeah, there is options there for that to play out. But right now, I don't think we're going to be seeing this today. I think these guys are just keeping in mind the weight of the situation that they're in. They do not want to give away these games too early on. They don't want to slip up, first of all. They need to get back into this, get that communication absolutely on point, make sure everything is covered off, and then maybe look at other maps that might wield a victory a little bit more comfortably than the likes of Steps. Steps is very hard to find your... Uh, let's say your your advantage on it may not be the easiest one in the world to find that difference and at the moment I think they're keeping that in mind here they don't want to make those moves without there being a follow-up to it and these two minutes now I think we might see a garbage time push possibly but outside of that I don't think we'll see much action from these two as you said Hacky did receive a little bit of damage he's had a follow-up shell since but he has been making the peaks. He has been happy to check out where the opponents are in that T32. He's got the HP to do so. He can soak up a good couple of shells before there is a serious issue arising. And you can see the little impact on the side there. But through and through, two minutes left. Is there any option for a game-winning move, or is it now about the draw? Russell also receives another shell. I don't know. I think it's quite a small map, and considering... See players in one location, it could be possible for them to just do, uh, get pushed and be taken down within a minute. But uh, Drew and Leprechauns don't look like they want to go forwards. Uh, I have to say they've been a pretty slow team, considering they are finished, one of the slowest teams in the whole league. Um, and uh, it kind of shows in their gameplay against a lot of teams. It's where they've been weak. They haven't had that real kind of ability just to make good, concise pushes. They've often won on other teams making bad pushes against them which works up to a point, but really in this uh, level of play and when they're really fighting for a season finals, they need to be making those good pushes, needs a good focus fire, and uh, message just take down Dr. Toy there in a tier one. So at least one frag going towards the Germans of Seaplane. Yeah, uh, tier one down, but with all that said and done, one minute left, I, I think we know the outcome of this. Uh, quite passive stuff all around. And, and as you said, though, the Leprechauns have you know, played this game style quite some bit. They've always stuck to this sort of play. Kerox is moving forward. Roster's turret will quickly move around, and he might get some fire on the side if he does try and pick up Trevez, the other tier one for C play. As long as Trevez can actually get the spot out on towards him. I think he knows where he is now. And see some fire coding. Kerox does actually miss that first shot. Roster. Not landing one either. Kyrix does take down Trevor's, but 37 seconds left. They've taken down the tier ones. Are we going to see a garbage time push? We certainly are. They're going to go in, try and do some damage, but with 30 seconds, as you said, really not much they can do. Yeah, 26 seconds now on the board, especially with you know, such hefty tanks in play. Sensei is making a move, but you can see the damage that can come in towards him as he does so. So a little bit, you know, walking into the lion's den willingly. Not exactly the smartest of plays. And right now, just fire exchange. Pretty much an even ordeal as we do see a 2 1390 pickup coming in there. But C play all in all can't do much, and neither can the Leprechauns. So the first map will be a draw out between these two. But it's something we've kind of grown to expect here, especially on steps. It's a map that doesn't exactly give you the opening path. You have to make it yourself, which isn't a bad thing. We've seen teams win it quite comfortably, but it's not going to be the case today. No, Steps is pretty passive and really in general the kind of format and the rules we've got does kind of give the teams um, the real option of saying, okay, in the first map we're going to draw it, second map we're also going to draw it most likely, and it's really those last three maps where they actually try and go for the win. So you can see that reflected in the map picks, often Steps, Prokhorovka fe featuring the first two, Himmelsdorf, um, Cliff, Mines, those kind of maps which you mm. can be pretty definitive on featuring in the last three. Of course, we're playing a best of five, three is what you need to win. Um, but if you do get to that last final map, if you have one map in the bag and it's another draw, then you end up with a win anyway. So 
it's it's just to give the teams a little bit more of an option to go forward and you know not seeing pointless games. Next map, next map will be Cliff. So not the easiest one to draw out. We have seen occasional draws. Don't get me wrong, especially at the start of the season when EU teams didn't seem to have the um, knowledge or the capabilities like some of the Russians or CIS teams did um, coming in with that little bit of background towards this map. But the European teams did catch up and we're seeing it being a little bit more definitive. And, you know, normally the, the team that pushes generally comes away quite nicely as long as mm -hmm. it's not that kind of Kazna, I'm going to try and do what Verse Pro have been doing to me push uh, when I went terribly wrong. But all in all, do you think we might see a bit of play out of these guys? There's certainly a chance for it, I feel. Yeah, Cliff is it's definitely a map we see a, quite a lot of aggression. It's, it's, mm. it's drawn out a little bit at the beginning because I don't think the teams really understood how to play it. Yeah. But it's kind of changed through the middle and definitely end of the season. There's been a lot more wins. Um, Dream Leprechauns on the whole, I think the better team on this map than Seaplay, who have struggled a lot and, and not mm. really shown us that much ability. I think mostly their last five games, the wins they've come off with have just been down to their momentum and just their unstoppable force as opposed to just what they are good on, on what map. So it's always an interesting factor if that will actually help them against Dream Leprechauns, who I think um, have been the stronger team on this map. But um, it, it's going to be the question Whoa. as well of, of what kind of tanks... Oh, I we thought want to the Hello is not going to be picking that. Dear Lord, I, no got, I was just like, what? Yeah, it was an M40, M M43. <laughs> it's not happening. No? No. No. That was like, if that was picked, that would have been so old school, it would be unbelievable. When, you know, on like Roenberg, for instance, you pick the Lorraine 15551, and, um, you know, some people would like Eclipse or whatever from Navi would pick the M43, and it was, you know, it just depends on if you want the damage or whatever. Um, mm. But... I don't think artillery is going to come back anytime soon, to be honest. Um, obviously, uh, quite a few changes to coming to World Tanks, and with the esports map and everything, I think it may be even more. It negated, might be yeah. even more negated yeah. than, it, than, it, than it is already. So, lineups come in. It's going to be the double T sixty nine, triple MX thirty ninety, double T one for Dream Leprechauns, a Finnish team, and of course, C play the Germans. Double T sixty nine, triple MX thirty ninety, double T one as well. So, tank lineups have been chosen. Fairly similar. We're not seeing, I don't think we see the 4 and 6. No, we don't see the 4 and 6 in play. We're seeing quite a standardized one that it works very well. T69s have their place. Um, 1390s certainly have theirs as well. And at the moment, generally, you'd say that's quite an aggressive lineup to an extent. But then again, we've seen this map played out two draws with the same lineup. So it doesn't necessarily give away too much towards what we're going to see. So, a little bit of an even kind of feel between these two so far, I think. Both mm. teams knowing what they would want. And I'm interested to see if anyone takes the early advantage and goes to that early lead and tries to you know, forge a victory in the second map rather than leading it on towards the last. So I'll be interested to see how that comes out because we did see Lucky Karaki, for example, or a couple of other teams always want that last map to be something they can safely either draw out or defend on the side they're starting on. And they'd have to go for the early victory on the first two maps. So that might be a factor coming to this. We'll have to wait and see. The teams are ready. So guys, let's turn our attention to the second map. Cliff. And battle number two is now coming up. We are still tied at 0-0. Neither team wants to take the risk on going for the aggressive move in the first map. But taking it onto Cliff, we might see some more action. So in the south in blue, it will be the Leprechauns. In the north in red, it's Sea Play. Is anyone doing anything different or is this our normal beginning to Cliff here? Well, message is going left, which is straight away different. Maybe wanting to get to that upper location or even try and get a couple of cross shots onto C play right at the beginning but at least for C play it's the standard start leaving a couple of tier ones behind usually they go a little bit aggressive send the rest of them up and nerve axe and the C69 will be going hull down in that position I really want to turn my attention to what message is going to do he's going to be there first a bit slow to the mark after say failing miserably to do hill climbing so that's going to cost them dearly in terms of the, the, the time they have but instead he's going to go right he can't go forwards because of the initial shots. Uh, the normal exchange at the beginning, Rasta takes a bit of damage, 4 6 4. And uh, really, it's just a start. From the south, you have quite an advantage going up. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually do a bit of damage. And then from the north, um, you have the better end game kind of solution. So we've seen this, the, the normal exchange. Um, and we'll have to see if that makes any difference. But one shot onto Rasta is not really a big 
a big deal. And um, it's really going to be how they keep on playing right now. But Tolo also receives a shot. Yeah, so a little bit of an exchange back and forward. Rasta and the kills or double stacking up on this hill. Spots consistently being made and the tier ones as well spawn each other out around that cliffside. Uh, WGL EU season four and Trevor's. So a little bit of a standard start. No aggressive move from the southern side just yet, but they look itchy. They look like they want to make something happen there. Seen to Hello and Kirex constantly moving about. Message yet to really make any use of his position. But waiting to receive would be Nervax. You'd probably have Hacky turning the turret around. You've got the dead zone also not too far away. And all in all, it'd be interesting to see where these guys would fancy that split. Because it looks like C player have you playing it a little bit further back. Not really having anyone backing up to kills or a Ruster too close by. They put Nervax down there with the dead zone just supporting a little further towards the west. So all in all, two minutes really passed here. No massive action, an exchange of shells, one towards Tehello, one towards Ruster, but it's fair, it's to be expected. You know, if the 3090 is in this position, you're probably going to get an initial shell, either from the likes of Message or a, a tank down towards the other side of the cliff. Who can get that turret up high enough? But it looks as though Tehello and Snake Guy Finn might have other plans in mind. Yeah, they seem to be flanking around towards the cliff. Trevez is there in the tier one, so um, they'll have to be careful. They want to get caught out, but I think generally they want to go a little bit defensive. I'm not sure exactly what they want to do. They seem to be going right. So I think they're going to go defensive with most of their tanks. And then what they're going to do is send the AMX 3090 down the lower road and ha make sure that once their tank is somewhere out of position, that they can still defend easily and still do the damage easily. Um, but we'll have to see if that's their plan or if they actually genuinely do want to try from a different angle altogether. You know, for instance, come from the right side. A Snake Eye Finn does drop down and Tolo will follow suit. That's probably what they want to do. Come from the lower side join message who's already up there or perhaps along the road uh, along the kind of e3 area and really just uh, do some damage into the side of c play they've been training a lot these guys in the last few days knowing that really everything's on the line and c play would have the advantage in terms of points so they desperate desperately need this win three points would take them up to 13 c play and tcm are on 12 so they would have to lose the next two games to uh, to allow Dream and Leprechauns to win, but still a good enough of motivation factor to try these tactics and perhaps something that will be able to counter C play and take them out. Oh, we'll see, because C play are completely unaware. I was going to question why they went on such a long rotate, but then again, no one was able to spot them out. So they've got into this position scot free. Nervax is probably the closest, if not the tier one of Doctor Tour, to finding these guys. But at the moment, they're they're pretty much there with absolutely zero pressure. So. It might get some crossing off shots from Hacky if he gets into the spot, or maybe to Kills or a Ruster, but without them being spotted, I think they're fairly safe for now. And Snake Guy Finn and Tohelo joining up with Message as you kind of uh, theorized earlier on. And it looks like maybe Sensai and Kirex are following suit. Yeah, so a double stage push basically, sending the T69 first because I imagine they're slower. Um, the MX 39s will be able to come up to this location a lot quicker. And of course, you don't give away too much of the map. So you're basically saying, we're going to keep the right side of the map. We're going to keep the left side of the map. And then we're going to slowly but surely kind of reorganize our resources to um, best effect. So it looks like uh, whatever Drooling Leprechauns wants to do is focused to where Tohelo and Snake Guy Finn are. But C play, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing to try and spot out. Their kills are continually tries to pop over there. But, you know, if you're in the right positions just below that cliff, you often... Um, won't get spotted by the kills as long as you're 50 meters away and you haven't got um, any kind of line of sight on, on the kills or tank then you're pretty much okay and you won't get uh, found out so all in all pretty like sneaky ninja stuff coming out from Drew and Leprechauns and I'm not sure if it's going to work or not Sensai is heading below along with Kirex and um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do um, Tano Snake Guy Finn are just on top so two MX 3090s below two T69s above they're basically Spot. saying the T69s have a good hull down ability so they can be in the better positions easier so here comes that fire as Dr. Tor did get those spots through no shells connecting just yet the fire coming in from Ruster and the Killzor who are now rotating away they're not aware of the other tanks holding back from the Leprechaun so this could be trying to bait out some of those 1390s to make a move falling back and Ruster is actually going to uh, do just that he's going to try and come around towards the more northern side of this map here. Sensai and Kirex still around, and these guys aren't just tier ones, they're both 1390s, so they have got some commitment towards this four minutes left. I'm interested to see what the rest of the plan is, because obviously Tehelo, Snake Guy Finn, and you know, a couple of the others aren't really in this one just at the moment, but Ruster now 
way further back. What, what's this? What do you think the rest of the plan is here? There's 50 meter proxy spots going to be used. Snake guys, uh, Kirix and Sensei uh, have good shots on two. The tanks out of there. Novak's just get uh, a kill onto Count though, so a little bit of a blow to Drew Necrocons. I think they would have expected that. And the two MX-99s, so maybe you can get a couple of shots on. No connections from them though. Uh, Travis does receive a lot of damage. Doesn't go down though. Uh, we are seeing a couple of shells being exchanged. One tier, tier one loss for C play, two for the Leprechauns. Kirex taking a good couple of shells from the likes of the Killzor and the Dead Zone. You can see Ruster being pressured now on reload. Needs to back away from here, Ruster. You can't outstay your welcome in these situations. And I think Dead Zone on reload as well. So a little bit more time of freedom coming in for the Leprechauns if they wanted to follow this move up. I'm still waiting to see where those T69s come into play. So at the moment, only two of the 1390s really have made that initial move. Dr. Tour gets spotted up again. And the dead zone is falling back. And maybe they're waiting for that counter play across the map. And that's exactly what's going to be coming out. And the first man in will be Hacky. He might be in trouble here if he's not careful. Yeah, Matolo's uh, only the one standing oh, here. splitting around the back and as well. And Snake Eye Finn's on the right. So two versus five this could be. Yeah, Tehello and Snake Eye Finn are going to have to weather this one out. You've got the 2-2 two -two split coming in. They're going to move in towards Tehello and Snake Eye Finn together. This is going to make it hard. Ruster takes the first. Tehello receives one back, but not the best focus fire coming out from the Leprechauns. But Ruster's going low, but the fire comes in from the back. Dead Zone takes down Snake Eye Finn. And Tehello, the next one up on the menu, taking a face full of damage from Ruster, from Haki. Finally, Kirix and Sensei arrive, but Nervak took down Kirix. Sensei chimes in, but the back and forth substantially going in C-Play's favour and sadly enough Message and Sensei were nowhere to be found. Yeah, they were come out of position because of uh, C-Play's good timing pushing in at the right place and the right time. To kills have still got six shells left so he's going to be able to take down Sensei. Yeah, Sensei now down to a one shot, 66 HP left. And there we go, Dekilzor will edge him and usher him out of this game. And now they just have to find Message. He's been spotted out, he's being hunted down, the dead zone moving in on the flank. Message coming around from the side. He's going to have to try and maybe back away. 1 minute 36. He is in 13.90, but there are others still alive for C-Play. He's trying to get out of this one. Message trying to do the best he can. 1 minute and 25 seconds left on this clock, but he's been found. He's been discovered, and I think he's going to go down very quickly. He's pretty much got the whole of C-Play to deal with. Yeah. Three tanks. Hacky just gifted in that final shot there to put him out of his misery, and C-Play pick up quite a victory now that wasn't them making the initial move that was them reacting mm. to it and why was there no follow-up move coming out from the leprechauns it looked like they kind of executed half of their plan and the other half just didn't really fall in place i'm not sure i think it might have been because count died i think kirex and sensei were supposedly supposed to do some damage onto the tanks that are falling back to try and deal with those two mm. um but they just didn't do anything there so basically they had to try and flank around and join and uh, join their tanks up on towards the uh, lighthouse area just the small rock and uh, Message, Tello, and Snake Guy Finn were supposed to um, ward off the whole of C play. It was three versus five, which is disastrous. You need mm. at least four versus five if you're in the better positions. You can possibly do something, but it's still very hard. So especially with two tanks less, it's, it's extremely hard. They do join in just at the very end, but it was way too late. And uh, by that time, C play had got themselves too much of an advantage. Yeah, most certainly. So. We are now seeing Seaplay picking up that winner. I'd like to see if that was their choice of map or not, if it was just put into the rotation in that order by Fluke. But it's, it's, I don't think they meant that victory in theory, because it looked like obviously the Leprechauns made that first move. Therefore, Seaplay were happy to play it out passively. Mm. And they just took the chance when it was there. And that is the risk of playing for the wins early on sometimes. It can backfire. But obviously, if there may be, uh, the Leprechauns had a bit of a more well-rounded plan, they could have executed a little bit better and they'd have picked up the win themselves. But not going to the case, we're going to have to turn our attention towards the next map, which is going to be Mines now. Is there any similarities in the last maps we've seen here, or is this you know, a bit of a case on its own? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a case on its own. Mines mm. is kind of in its own league in terms of the way we see the play going on. Um, and they are pretty much the only one which can come as close as Cliff because of the, how dynamic it is. You have different routes of attack. You, know, you can go right, you can go up, you can go left. Um, whereas most maps are quite linear in, in a lot of respects. But then again, Mines is um, it's always interesting to watch because there's very rarely a draw in it. We've seen, yes, mm. a couple of T32s sitting back, um, especially from the south, but it still can be broken fairly easily if you get the execution right. More importantly, if you get the tank picks right, you don't go for two yep. light tanks. You you know pick up, for instance, a T32, an IS-3 we've seen commonly featured as well. And of course, if you want that hill, the MX-1390s, WZ-132 still an extremely important pickup for both teams. So, 
you know, we countered, well, we encountered the WZ-132. We've also seen the 110 coming out. Do you think either of those will feature in today's picks? Because they were kind of a left field choice there last time around, and the 110 mm. didn't really find its place. I'm not sure... That the 110, they won that match, but I'm not sure if it was actually to do with the 110 or is it just... We didn't see it tested enough. We didn't see enough, it tested enough. I mean, it's got its it's got its got benefits for sure. I mean, just easier to use in general. It's just a, an easier tool, but it doesn't have the skill cap of the IS-3. You can go a lot harder, a lot further um, with that tank. So it's it just depends what these guys feel like. Um, for me, I prefer the Russian tank to the Chinese one just because you can do so much more with it. You can absorb so much more. And uh, as long as you're just in the right position at the right time, you can still hit the shots you need to hit, especially on mines, which is a fairly small map. So let me ask you this question, and it may be fairly basic to you, but why would you ever pick that WZ-132 in front of, let's say, a 1390, both used for similar mm. ideas, i.e. taking the hill or again up there fast. What are the benefits to one over the other? Because it's been a common choice between the two at the moment. So the MX 1390 doesn't have reload when you get on that hill. It's about right. 10 seconds, 7 seconds away from reload. So you need a W132 if you want to do an immediate damage. And if you can do immediate damage, then you can get the initial advantage. Right. Which when your AMX 1390s come off reload, you usually pick one, uh, two, one, WZ132, two AMX 1390s. You'd have done enough damage to actually win that engagement even against three AMX 1390s. So that's the logic behind it. Mm. And the picks for these two, double WZ132, double T32, T69 for C play, double uh, T69, T32, WZ132, double tier one from DRL. Well, we'll have to find out if your theory comes into effect as they both are playing that tank. So, guys, let's get ready for mines. Welcome into battle number three. You guys at home still favoring C-Play, calling it at 51%. And speaking of C-Play, they'll be in the south, currently leading this with a one-map advantage. But in the north in blue, it's the Leprechauns looking to stop them. And what are we seeing so far from these guys? Are we seeing that WZ-132 leading the pack? Of course, uh, Message going to be heading up the old Sensei in hot pursuit AMX-1390. But two AMX, one AMX-1390, one WZ-132 versus two WZ-132. Well, the initial damage will be with C-Play, but can they make it stick soon enough? Those 1390s will come into play. Message is low, down to a one-shot, 33 HP. But finally, Sensai arrives with his message to land the shell towards Nervax. The dead zone makes light work of Message and takes back control of that hill. Just a touch, but Sensai still roaming after Ruster. Means this is not done just yet. Kirex taking a pounding and... Sensai's in a little bit of a no man's land situation here and Kirex can't escape these shots from the Killzor. Yeah, you shouldn't have actually gone forwards at all. They had the advantage uh, during Leprechauns, but they kind of gave it away by pushing that Kirex forwards. Yeah, and Rasta constantly toying around. He got into a bad position. They got caught off, set on fire, and now he could really be in trouble. Down very low, he gets removed from the game by, w by WGL EU Season 4, one of the new additions uh, creating that T69 uh, and the Killzor now picking up where he was. The Killzor soaking up those shells and a bounce from Sensai but finally has to turn his attention towards him. Sensai has been the thorn in the side of Seaplay for some time here but the HP pool so very low for the Leprechauns. They've really taken some damage here so let's take stock. Who's got the advantage here and why? Well Seaplay have uh, done a lot of damage but they haven't got a lot of kills and it's exactly the opposite story from uh Dream Leprechauns, they've got a lot of kills, two Nervex and Ruster, both WZ 132s, but haven't done a lot of damage, and that's thanks to some great um, pickups in terms of tank picks for C play. Um, because they've got the T32 times two and the, the dead zone there and the T69, which are much more durable than, for instance, Sensai and Message in the uh, MX 3090 WZ 132, but they still need to get the kills. WG, WGL EU Season 4, otherwise known as Finnish Kebab, is down to 141 and Kirex is down to 234 so also one shot a little bit more shells do 
head the way of C play, but they're certainly not out of this game, and they are pushing forwards. Yeah, it looks like C play want to make their move right now. Dekilzer has to back off the dead zone, trying to push forward in the T69. Snake Guy Finn might be the first one caught here. Hacky coming around on the side. Here comes the supporting fire. Hacky in the dead zone, unleashing hell towards Snake Guy Finn. He is dispatched off swiftly, leaving just WGL EU Season 4. Kirex and Sensei standing. Hacky taken a bit from the side from Kirex and Sensei, but the HP pool still substantial alongside the C-Play boys and Sensei will fall to the same fate and now we just see WGLU Season 4 and Kerex alive with the two tier ones. And some great shots there by Dekilzer blinding towards the bushes taking him out perfect precision play from him and that HP is so far winning over the tanks as more damage comes away and only WGL1 season, WGL Season 4 Kerex left in the uh, T69 to try and take these one backs but they're both one shots and they're both going to take a lot of damage they get spotted. Yeah, Hacky's moving in, Dekilzor edging closer, and this could be over in a matter of seconds. Countdown to 5 HP, and here we go, Hacky moves in, gets a big bit of damage, but Dekilzor comes up big for him. But WGLU Season 4 still takes down Hacky, leaving the dead zone to clean up the mess. Still, the T69 not giving up just yet, the dead zone not landing the shell, but he will on the second time of asking, leaving just Count alive, and he is trying to make a dash for it. The dead zone needs to install... Um some sort of uh, cross server crosshair, client crosshair combination because he was a little bit behind on that one, I have to say, only hitting the wall. Great shot by him. Count left, as you said. Goes down to Trevez for the tier one and I'll bring you up 2-0 to C play. Yeah, 2-0 leading at the moment. And let's have a little bit of a talk about what we saw at the start then. The two WZ132s against the one mm. and 1390. Who do you feel came out better in that situation? Definitely the 1MX3090 and the, uh, the WZ132s because, yes, once the uh, WZ132s, uh, the MX3090 came off reload, it could do a lot of damage. The two WZ132s did a lot of burst at the beginning, very good reload, decent damage, 250, but once the MX3090 was there, it was there to stay and it just absolutely obliterated them. That's why you usually see teams pick one and the other instead yeah. of just both of the same. Um, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. I also thought, um, you know, Message could have played that a little better, maybe even lived if he went mm -hmm. with Sensei. Um, but all in all, you know, the beginning was definitely into Julian Leprechaun's favor. The problem yeah. is that once they saw um, the tank very low on the hill, trying to scamper out of there, they basically went forwards too far. Kirix took a lot of damage. WG WGL Eason 4 took too much damage. They all started taking damage for no reason, despite the fact that they had that hill, they had the advantage, and really only Ruster could run away for so long. Um, he could kite, but only in certain positions, so he mm. couldn't actually cross lines of fire, which is basically why he had to stop and why he died in the end. So why Drew Leprechauns gave that damage away, I have no idea, because it lost them the game. Yeah, mistakes being made there. And now C player on game point. They are one map, map away <clears throat> from picking up the match. So exactly what they'd need to get themselves looking a little bit better in those rankings to keep working towards getting qualified and make sure they're safe in this one. Whereas the Leprechauns not having a great display today. They've been caught out twice pretty much mm. with genuine errors in, in tactics and play which may be a little bit too much pressure coming in for these guys. I'm not sure what's going wrong because it looks like they're trying to execute their tactics and their plans but it's just falling a little bit apart so hopefully they can gather themselves now to what could be the final map obviously Ensk being next. First real city map we're going to see. Who's got the advantage here? Well, C play are 2 0 ahead, and Drilling Leprechauns, they need to win this one, which they can't do anymore. They can only get one point because obviously the first map was a draw. Yeah. And this will be the fourth map, so possibly only um, two all each. So, yeah. really, now Drilling Leprechauns are pretty much out of the finals. Um, you know, one point, bring them up to 11, and if C play get one point, it bring them up to uh, 13. So, Drilling Leprechauns, uh, C play can still possibly qualify. Drew and Leprechauns pretty much can't. So mm. C play a little bit better, but they definitely need to still get this win. It'll be disastrous pretty much if they don't get the three points because um, that will guarantee them um, a slot in the in the finals. So tank lineups are coming in. Uh, Nervax, uh, the dead zone, Hacky, all playing um, the heavy tanks. Nervax picking the IS-3, the other two picking the MX-5100s, as we would expect. I'm looking for Nervax to really step up here. Yep. I said at the beginning of the show, <laughs> He's been doing very well over the season. Not so well against the Suba, and, and we see often yeah. with these top players, you know, it's really how they're feeling in certain parts of the season that gives the team the edge they need to win. So I am looking forward to seeing how he does perform on really a map he needs to, Ensk, where he's playing as one of his favorite tanks, the IS-3. Um, but 
you know, I think this one's going to go to C play. It's just a yeah. good map for them, and they've shown some real aggression on it, being caught out a couple of times, but they've got the general idea right, so they just need to get the execution a little bit better. Well, that's what we're probably going to be waiting to see here between these two. Still a couple of seconds left for them to pick up those final tanks. I don't think we're going to see uh, too many surprises, excuse me, in this one. Maybe a couple more 5100s and IS-3s, but I doubt we'll be seeing the likes of the T-69 occasionally coming out, which you've seen. Is there any other tanks you'd find viable on here, really? We've seen, for instance, the Americans pick up the uh, MX-3090 and try and use that to best effect, but it doesn't really work, to no. be honest. No. Um, it, it's just... It's a 600 by 600 meter map. You can walk across it pretty quickly. Um, yeah. So why you pick the fastest tank in the whole of the map pool, it doesn't really make any sense. I yeah. mean, it could work if the other team doesn't do very well, um, but it's going to be triple AMX 5100, double IS3 for both teams. So mirror matchup going into what could be the final map. So guys, let's get ready for Ensk. And welcome to Ensk battle number four. C play still leading two to zero. You guys at home seem to have guessed it right again, but still, Leprechauns could tie this one up and C play will be starting in the Time north, in red, in the south, in blue, with all the work to do. It will be the Leprechauns looking for a way back in here. Are we seeing any unique beginnings or is this what we'd pretty much expect by now? Well, C play classically like to split the map in half and, and put their tanks really along this line, but they do play from the south most of the time. So Drew and Epicorns perhaps that have that option as well. They need to try and counter something that which they haven't seen a lot of, which is always hard. They are heading over towards the right side. They're probably going to get some spots out. And C play have got themselves in the perfect position to do some damage against the side um, of Drew and Epicorns. So no damage done so far as uh, really Drew and Epicorns have been fast to the mark and they've also got across right towards the back so they don't get spotted so easily. Yeah, and C play playing quite passive. I think they know what's up. Uh, you know, obviously the opponents have to go for the victory here. They have to win this one, otherwise C play end up walking away with it pretty much uh, simple as that. So, at the moment, it looks like the more aggressive side, once again, being the Leprechauns. Can they actually make something from this? We've seen a lot of caps coming out on this map recently. Yeah, that's be interesting. We've seen uh, Denali Esports actually try a similar tactic, going very aggressive at the start, and also being caught out by this tactic, being very aggressive at the start. So it's going to be interesting. And Dream Epicorns really two 0 down. This is the last chance for them to possibly get a win. So you play haven't spotted them. Probably expect them just to go to the normal defensive positions from the south, and instead they're going to get caught out very quickly. There's a couple of spots to come out to kills or Nervex, both being spotted by the tier one. Tierlo is in the perfect position. So it'll be interesting how Drew and Epicorns do execute and towards the cap they go. Well, there we go. Finally, the alarm bells will ring. The Killzor catches a glimpse. First shot actually comes in towards Sensai, but it looks like they're not done quite yet. Ruster exchanging with Snake Guy Finn. Sensai finds a spot. The Killzor unleashes towards Message. And the initial picks and the damage coming in a little bit in favor to see play they've been getting the work done towards sensei message and it looks like the push has slightly been halted yeah but look how much damage is going towards uh ruster there going low and going down for c play jesus he went down in a split second and it looks like c play unsure really how to come around this one they're still in the city they're still looking for an angle to take this suddenly the uh urgency will kick in once either the likes of the kills or gets caught out he is out on a limb which does make me worry a little bit here. He's out on his own. He's not got necessarily too much backup. He's got to hello to his right. He's got a couple of players right in front of him. But in the day, he's got to be careful here because it looks like there's a cheeky little split coming around the backside. Nervax cons onto Ooh. it, gets a couple of shells down, but message in a lot of trouble there. You can see the dead zone just missed that shell, but that could have been game over. But Nervax gets a little caught. These guys are exchanging pretty readily and. It's going to be a matter of time. Snake Guy Finn goes in a little early. Fire from the side. Chunk of damage done. Snake Guy Finn got caught out. Did get tracked, but gets himself up and running. Finally, the kills or lands that shell towards message and alleviates some of that pressure coming in from that K line. Count actually has to try and go for the cap. He should have gone a little bit earlier, leaving uh, Drew Leprechaun slightly at disadvantage in terms of HP. Snake Guy Finn really down to one shot, 2 1 6. And that's going to give C play the option to need to go forwards. Also, getting the cap on the way. A massive stack of tanks coming out for the Leprechauns here. You can see them 
right in there. Nice work from Nervax finding count. That's going to keep that timer pretty damn long. WGLU Season 4 does take one from the side. Kerix gets a little angsty there. Goes for the peak around the side. Gets tracked, held, but not that much damage done. Punishment not coming in. WGL Season 4 peeks around from the side. Trying to do the damage. Trying to catch out Nervax and the kills. Or Nervax is a little bit weak. Zensai comes in. One shot now between these two. Who's going to land the shell? The dead zone takes down Snake Guy Finn and Nervax desperately needs to land that shot, but the kills all will claim it. And the kills are flooding in for C play. Now just Sensei and Kirex alive. Since I was in out of position completely, he wasn't there defending WGL season four. Some bad execution, some bad coordination coming from the Finnish team. If they had all gone on at the same time, it would have been another story. And god damn it, it was so close for the reload as well. As he goes down. Three versus one in terms of combat tanks, and it looks like the cap is also going to work. Ten seconds left on that. Ten seconds on the cap. Trevor's is in there waiting this one out. The rest of his team trying to keep Sensai away. Two seconds left. C-Play have done the job they needed to get the base cap and do the damage they had to. Very well played to them, and I like the focus fire. I like the way they all soaked up the damage. Everyone was invested then. And they got what they needed. They basically waited for Drew and Epicorns to make the mistakes because at the beginning, DRL generally were in, uh, in a better position. They had got Rusted yep. down, their best player. Um, but the first mistake was Message being too far forward. He was just, you know, he th I don't know why he didn't expect to get spotted there. He had to be a lot more cautious as mm. they did. Cautious as they did have a little, little bit of time to play with. And then the second mistake came in is that Dream Epicorns just got impatient. They all pushed around at different times. WL Season 4 was on his own, and it kind of all fell apart at the team. Sensei yeah. should have gone forwards because WL Season 4 did a great job in that one, and despite the fact that he was this close to reloading, taking down Nervax, um, he did good. Sensei was in the wrong position, though, and that basically couldn't be a good thing because he couldn't finish them off. And you can see the fight coming in. At this point, I'd still say, you know, excluding Snake Eye Finn, it was a very even matchup. Cap starting on both sides. Ruster was down for one side, message for the other. Count should not have died there either. Why he went down so early? You know, they could have pressured that cap so much more. And it just looked like the Leprechauns didn't have a plan then at this point. They kind of lost that communication, that potency. One coming in, Kerex getting a little bit aggressive. WGL season, EU Season 4 pushes quite far forward, getting Nervax very low, but you can see it comes down to a one-shot pretty should much. be basically be forwards yep. and should be taking down Nervax. And when Nervax go down, Snake Eye Finn, uh, the kills are still could have gone down. Um, but the problem is he just wasn't there. Look how far he is out away. Kerex has to come in and finally do the shells. So I think Sensei, he was really the player that should have performed there. The Dead Zone and Haki both could have been um, easily dispatched within mm. that matchup. So small mistakes, but they accumulate into obviously a loss there yeah. for the Leprechaun. Sad to see, but congratulations to Seaplay getting one step closer to get themselves through towards those offline finals, get themselves a little bit more secured within that positioning. But you guys at home, you know, during the first few games, we're already voting at, uh, you know, around, let me just double check how much it was, I think 51%, so just tipping the scales in favor to C play. And you guys at home normally get it right. Melly, did they uh, actually predict it right to the very end? Yeah, it seems like. Well, as you said, the, uh, the vote started out very balanced. We mm. had, like, a, well, at the start, it was actually pretty clear for uh, C play, but as the team started playing on the servers, yeah. It balanced out. It was 50, 51 to 49 for a very long time, and then suddenly shifted over to 61%. This is not a final score yet, since the the guys at home are still in the last map. But as you see, they favored core play already. And if we have a look at the votes, we could, yeah, it's pretty much pretty clear. But they thought that. Um, Drilling leprechauns were able to get at least one or two maps, so it wasn't it wasn't mm. that clear of a of, an, of a prediction. So I, I think the leprechauns should have done a little better. In theory, they looked just a little bit mm. just disjointed compared to normal. They, they normally they do go for these tactics that can sometimes catch them out themselves. Almost they they try a little bit too much and then kind of lose it. But normally they do better than that. So I think the community were right to expect maybe another map from them. Maybe Absolutely. trying to pick up the first, but you know it's the way it goes. But if people do want to keep those votes coming in and some more predictions, how do they do so? Uh, it's really easy. Just head over to facebookcom wgleu There will be a poll uh, in, uh, before every matchup where you just have to vote for your favorite team. The voting for your team it doesn't uh, affect the the chance of winning the bonus code. The really thing that matters is just the exact prediction of the scoreline, and you just fill it in it into a little form field. And if you find the poll tab on the Facebook page, um, there is a little field. They just type in your prediction, and 
Well, if you get lucky, you get a bonus code. And I have a question, Oli, mm. regarding the dr uh, drooling leprechauns. Um, ch don't show in their, their, the, the performance we can actually see from them. As, as a former pro, pro player, how does it feel to, to be on s under such pressure and then <laughs> losing, actually losing the map? And how, how do you, how do, what is your mindset and how do you come back from it? Well, they're an inex inexperienced team, and I think it's more about just their inexperience than anything else. Because, of course, they've just uh, qualified into the season a week before the season started, as one of the team dropped out. Um, so, towards the end of the season, when all that pressure starts mounting, it becomes very hard for inexperienced teams to actually get the results they need. At the beginning, where everything is still possible, it's kind of easy because you can surprise and you can do all sorts of innovative things, and that's where Dream Leprechauns were great at the beginning mm. of the season. They were perfect. But now the experienced teams are head and shoulders above and C-Play have generally that at, uh, going for them a lot more and a lot more structured, I think, in general. So mm. that's pretty much why I think that for them, at least, um, they need to go back to the drawing board a little bit. But I think they got a lot of potential, more potential than I've seen from a lot of the new teams. Okay, thank you very much. So that was my question. If you guys at home still have questions left, just head over to Twitter and use the hashtag WGLEU to get your questions in our studio and I will ask our experts for you guys. And um, well, of course, follow our Twitter account at WGLEU to stay updated during the matches. Even if you can't follow the stream, I will send you live updates from the studio, from the happenings on the servers, and you won't miss any single minute and any single action going on here. And of course, follow Follow our Twitch channel, it's very important. Since you get a notification as soon as we're going live, you get an email, you get a pop-up, you get everything, and um, you won't miss any single minute, a minute of our lovely production. Wow. No pressure. Lovely production. Keep it up, Tim. But one Finnish team has fallen already today. So you play taking the crown on that one. Will it be the same case for the next game? We have Freefall coming up against Evil Panda Squad. Arguably a harder opponent, mm. I'd say, than the likes of C play. So maybe the Finns can turn things around in the second game. But your quick prediction on this one? Mm. EPS? Uh, EPS. <laughs> I yeah, think I, EPS I think so. have been really, really sick. They've yeah had a couple of up and down moments, yeah. but they've pretty much 100% qualified for the, the final. So it doesn't actually mean that much to them. But they want to get the better seeding for sure, and that's going to be in the back of their minds, um, perhaps even the front of their minds, to be honest. Free for all have a really hard job. They certainly do. So if you want to check that out, do make sure you stay tuned. We'll be back in about five to ten minutes with the next game coming up between Free Fall and Evil Panda Squad. <laughs> 